Hey friends, storyboard artist Paul here. Let's make sure our audio is working okay today. Let me get going here. Hello? Wait for it to kick in. Hey friends, storyboard artist Paul here. Okay, we've got an audio check. We're all ready to go. And uh, happy Thursday evening to you all. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is Paul here, storyboard artist Paul, and welcome you, welcoming you to another live stream. I'm so excited to be with you tonight. Uh, we're talking about something special uh, in our storyboard journey together and uh, going through all the different fundamentals of everything you need to know as a storyboard artist. Uh, you can use these concepts with whatever visual storytelling telling medium that you have or that you're working on, whether it be for storyboarding, uh, for comic book making, for telling your visual stories, whether it be film, comics, video games, uh, for the cinematics for the video games, is it for a cartoon or feature animation, a music video, are you trying to do a presentation of some sort? where you need uh, uh, you know, uh, visual language here with your storyboards or advertising, whatever it might be. Uh, I hope we're giving you some great value here uh, and through these live streams. I'm really having a blast uh, having these live streams with you. It gives me an opportunity to um, teach a little bit, share my processes, uh, and sort of demystify all the things that go into storyboarding, the things that are going through my mind as we're going forward on this journey. So far, right now we've talked about the first uh, live stream we did uh, was about simplifying your drawings. We're not looking for Rembrandt, uh, Picasso, Da Vinci, you know, Michelangelo quality paintings. Uh, we're looking for simplicity of the, the narrative language. Uh, in that first uh, live session we just talked about, uh, simple shapes, silhouette, um, how do we quickly get the lines down. Um, but like I said, we usually see a lot of uh, fancy storyboards and when you see them on Instagram or you see them in the art of books, those are sort of the final uh, production or the concept work, uh, but the day-to-day -day, uh, storyboarding is very quick and loose and easy. And we went over those tips. The next thing we went over in our second live stream was about the shots. We went from an extreme wide-angle shot all the way into a very uh, extreme close-up, or we did a uh, insert shot if I needed to see my can of water and that was the focus of the shot there so it's bringing you know having that shot and telling a different story where we said most of the cinematics uh, that we're drawing were sort of that oh, well like we see right here this mid-level shot uh you know medium shot of what we're doing sort of from the chest to the head so um the third uh live stream that we did together just to recap uh was all about camera height and camera angle uh whether and, and how, how do we work with that? How do we move that camera? How do we create those and draw those shots from uh, pretty much an eye level all the way down to a foot level, you know, so, um, in terms of what we're talking about? And also our angles uh, from a low angle to a high, a high angle to a low angle, excuse me, to a, an overhead aerial shot um, to all the d different various shots, you know, and, and what is the emotional impact of that. How do we visually communicate that through our drawings? Um, and then today, I'm super excited about this. So today, we're going to be talking about composition. Composition is super key. It's exciting. Uh, it's something that we're, we're, we're creating that visual uh, picture, you know. Every, every shot that we create becomes a scene. Every scene that we're creating becomes a sequence. And after all the sequences, they're gonna become a film. So today we're uh, doing composition uh, for storyboards. And we're gonna draw out those uh, different scenarios. We're gonna talk about those different scenarios. Uh, but before we get started, I'm super excited. I really thank you, all my friends out there watching and participating, and uh, a lot of folks have been communicating through me through YouTube, through Instagram, uh, through Facebook, uh, and, and through threads. I, I really sincerely appreciate all the feedback, 
all the questions, all the DMs. Uh, so keep them coming. Uh, I'm just trying to create some value. I'm having fun with this uh, teaching and uh, I hope you're getting some great value out of it. Um, you know, please, uh, you know, it, it was, you know, please subscribe to our channel. This is a budding YouTube channel focusing on storyboarding and filmmaking and how, how do you go about it. I know a lot of people are new. There's a lot of pros out there that I've been communicating with. Uh, just a lot of great things. I look forward to the future for where we can take this uh, channel together. And again, I'm so thankful. We just hit 80 subscribers today. I thank you so very much for uh, liking, subscribing, and uh, uh, giving comments on, uh, on how you feel about the material that's being presented to you. And I really, truly appreciate that. So thank you and thank you for joining me. If you haven't subscribed or you're watching this on the replay, I just ask that, hey, if you I love your support, I really do. I do this on my own free time after work and uh, I hope it's bringing you some great value. And uh, I enjoy doing this and, and it hones in my own personal skills so we're helping each other. So if you do like the content that you're watching today or the other videos, hey, please just give, it a, give uh, the, these uh, videos a like. Please subscribe, click that bell notification button to be notified when I'm going to go post. I, I do a lot of communication in, through uh, Instagram, but also too, if you're a YouTube subscriber, if you hit that bell notification uh, button, you'll see when we're going to go uh, live. And I really appreciate you uh, chatting with me. If you have any questions, please do uh, give a comment or, or throw me up a chat. Let's take a look at the chat, so see who's joining us today. So I have my good buddy, Ronnie. How you doing, Ronnie? Good to see you. Thanks for joining um, my night. Yes, it is going well. I had a long day at work. I started at, I'm here over here on the East Coast. And so I started work this morning at 6 a.m. And it is currently 11 o'clock at night. And we're going to have some fun. I just want to make sure that our West Coast friends uh, can jump out there. I'm originally from California, currently in Pennsylvania. So, uh, uh, you know, I bounce back and forth to West Coast, East Coast, because uh, a lot of my family's on the West Coast. So... But anyway, uh, as we go on today, we're talking about composition for storyboards. If you do have any questions, Ronnie or anybody else, just throw them into the chat as we go along. So composition is one of those key fundamental uh, aspects of what we're doing in storyboarding. You know, we're, we have our picture frame. So as, uh, let me turn this off here. So if I move my cursor around, this box, this bounding box is our picture frame. This is what the audience is going to see. So our audience is going to see this box. This box is key. They're going to, the audience is looking at that. That's the movie screen, the television screen, the phone screen, all the different screens. And your audience in the theater or on your phone is sitting here looking at this box. And that's what this box is. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to compose a great picture. Um, if we if we go back in uh, in time before movies were created or television or or your phone to watch all these different things, uh, you would have a painting. And most portraits were vertical. You know, there was a vertical portrait. Okay. And if you, went, if you go to the Louvre in Paris, or you're going to your local museum or art gallery, you're going to see most portraits are right here, uh, whether it be the Mona Lisa or uh, whatever painting it might be. The painting is here. The character is here. And that's sort of the portrait here. And whether it be, you know, a queen, Elizabeth, or... Who, <laughs> you know, whoever it might be, you would see the painting like this, okay? And that's how we usually, so that picture frame, uh, uh, you know, and the ratio that you're drawing in uh, changes, you know, and over time, like I said, before film and the creation of photography, um, you know, we were doing paintings like this. Um, it's sort of a little fun here with this real quick. And so this is what our paintings would look like and we would paint and uh, uh, you'd have your different patrons and artists would go and paint. Uh, you know, you have a Michelangelo sitting on his back painting the Sistine Chapel. And you think about that, that painting of, uh, of, of uh, you know, up there in the Sistine Chapel and everything was a, a, a one picture story. It told a lot of story 
um, in terms of if we go back in art history uh, and we're talking about uh, you know composition uh, there, there's just so much storytelling you have a single image in terms of what you were telling so when you're storyboarding you want every every frame or every shot you're creating you want it to count you don't want it to you know as, as we go and we talk about boarding off and maybe we're doing a sequence a sequence and the sequences maybe you know uh, for anywhere from like a commercial where it might be 40 frames uh, or you go up into the you know hundreds to a thousand frames just to get a great sequence every one of those shots needs to count it needs to hit that spot on composition storytelling and if it's not hitting that spot to move the story along or give the, the, the audience some piece of detail it gets it gets tossed out and it goes on the next one. And that's where your director and and uh, your client is working with you on as you're trying to build these things. But back to our quick little history lesson. You have your basic portrait that we were talking about. But if you were doing a landscape, it would it would be more of a horizontal painting. Okay. And and then in that horizontal painting you would have your horizon line. Maybe you would have your sun over here, some some clouds. Uh, I think I feel like Bob Ross now. Tiny little happy trees. Uh, <laughs> and and you would just you would have that. You'd have your house or whatever it might be. The smoke's coming up. But you'd have your forest in here, and, and landscapes. Whoops, that went crazy. Stylus went a little wacko, but anyways, your 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 painting would be like this. And but what my point is is that your painting would be horizontal. So again, your portrait painting would be a vertical, and your painting for a landscape would be horizontal. So these are a lot of lessons that we're talking about today. But we're going to put it with our bounding box over here, which is our storyboard frame. Different aspect ratios, so these would be considered different aspect ratios in today's sort of terminology, so you would change those up depending on what you're doing. Are you doing an epic film, The Lord of the Rings? Are, are you doing something more of a quite indie, indie drama where there's a lot of head talking, you know, uh, where you see that portrait style and that would be more of that focus. So we could talk about aspect ratios, we'll talk about uh, camera movement later. There's so many different things to talk about. So, but today it's about composition. So when we're talking about composition today, we have, like I said, the picture frame. Let's get that off. And a layer here. So we're talking about that picture frame now. And like I said, you're looking at that whole square here of our, our, our cinematic uh, picture, picture frame. And what are the different aspects to tell a story uh, through that and you know what we're doing is we're when we're creating a composition we're, we're creating elements and we're arranging those elements in the shot uh, to make a composition for the image so we're arranging those elements too in terms of what we're doing maybe you know let's talk about the simplicity of, uh, of there's a there's a character here Okay, there's a character here somewhere, and maybe there's a character closer to us when we're talking about the over-the-shoulder shot, or maybe there is a group of people over here, and and what we're doing is we're we're creating those, arranging the elements in here to tell the story. Uh, if and we were talking about this in our camera angle shot, you know, it's like maybe this person is dominant and looking over you know, that person, or maybe the, the angle of the camera is lower, and the person in the middle now is more powerful. So we're arranging all those elements in, their sh in the shot. And what is the relationship between all these different elements? What is the relationship between, oops, these characters? Or what's the relationship with the group here uh, on, on our picture plane? You know, it's like, uh, that's what we're doing and that's what we're trying to communicate to our audience 
as we're drawing these boards. You know, uh, like I said in, in previous uh, live sessions, it's like this is the most exciting time. I, I think when you get a script, you're working with a director, you're getting to do the initial drawings uh, and being the, 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 in a sense, the director of the film as you're putting this all together. You're the first person to put it together the visual language of, of this particular um, project or film or whatever it might be. So it gets really exciting, you know. Um, let me just see here. Okay, so when you're learning how to storyboard, um, a, a lot of teachers and, and folks will we go back to what we were just talking about with the test. If you can do your image, it, that one image in, in before film and photography and film were invented, it was the single image and that image had to tell that story. So you need to take that into, and when you're learning how to storyboard, and we were talking about all the elements and how they're arranged in the shot, you're telling that story, you know, in that shot, that single frame. And in that single frame, you're communicating what's going on in the story and pushing that story along. So uh, you're, you're taking those old, old world traditional art ways of, of, the, uh, of yesterday and putting it into the technology of today in filmmaking and the practice of that. So um, as we, we talk about, I get another, I wanna make sure everybody can see everything here, cool. Let's get another layer in here. I have a lot of layers today. Okay, so let's talk about the, um, the first way we can build a composition. Get this down to the... Oops, I lost my picture frame. Let's bring you back. Oops. Shrink you down a little bit. Bring you over. Okay, so we got our picture frame. So, so the first thing that we're going to talk about as as we're creating a composition, we're we're going to talk about points. Okay. And literally, it's a point, <laughs> you know. And uh, those the and, and that that's where we're trying to draw the line. So if we have this big bounding box here of our picture frame and we're trying to have a single point wherever that point is is where your eye is gonna is gonna go so my point right here is my eye is gonna go right here so if I'm the viewer I'm looking over here and that's where you as the storyboard artist you're going and saying all the focus attention friends it's right here. This is where I want you to look. I don't want you to look over here. I don't want you to look over there. I want you to look right here because that's where I have that character. That's where I'm putting that person right now. That's where they're going to be. And that's where I want you to focus. Okay. And so points are really critical in terms of what we're trying to do. Maybe that point might be over here. You know, maybe I want my eye to go over there. Maybe I want maybe to look down here and you're directing that viewer. That is your focal point in terms of what you're trying to do. Um, you know, you're directing the eye. You know, let's, let's just talk about how, how our point's done. Let's do some examples uh, of uh, points. Maybe I have, um, let's just say I have some sort of horizon line here and we're coming out here and there's a, you know, epic, mountain and there's a journey of this mountain and uh, in terms of what we're talking about and let's get some drop shadows so this is like a, a canyon and, and we're really focused on this right now and uh, our, our epic hero is on a journey in this area and uh, we're looking at it, but we're looking at that point. And so what we're doing is your eye is going to be focused on that particular point. So let's get this back down again. Four. Whoops. Okay, behave Photoshop. Okay, and so if we have that character or that point, 
we're going to focus our eye is going to be focused on this one little area in that whole dramatic scene. That's where we want you to focus and, uh, and, and where, where it is, where everything is intersecting and you're drawing the eye to that one point. And it could be something like this type of scene. Let's continue uh, looking at it. It might even just be, let's just say, Let's just say there's a, a character here. And we want to focus on that character. This is where we want that person to focus, your eye to focus. So you would come in here, whoops, let's get a little bit of color. Focus on that one area. Got some rocks or something in here, but this is where we want the eye to focus. This is where we want all the attention is at that one point within the shot. And this is what we're talking about. So I want that focus on that one point right there, okay? So as we're talking about composition, uh, that is what we're talking about. And a point is a critical aspect of, of putting together a, a composition. It's like you, you're focusing, this is the simplest form of composition of what we're trying to, to, to teach and talk about right now. So let's go here, let's get that down, let's turn that off. Okay, let's quick go. Uh, let's see, Ronnie, I think that's what is so cool about storyboarding. Uh, they want to set in the stage. Uh, so, so Ronnie made a comment on here real quick, and she, and uh, excuse me, and Ronnie said, I think that's what's so cool about storyboarding. You're the one setting the stage for what the film will look like. That is so true, Ronnie. It, 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 and that's what's so exciting about what we're doing. And, uh, you know, you're doing this on a big scale, and when you see your a music video, your animation, whether it be online or on the big screen, you're just like, wow, it blows you away. Uh, you know, that the, the director and the cinematographer or whoever it might be is taking your initial, these rough little sketches and uh, make, making a, a big budget film out of it. It's absolutely phenomenal. What, a, what an experience. Okay, moving on. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, from, the, from the rule of thirds, um, we, we're trying to direct the audience and where they're looking. So uh, from points, we're going to talk about the rule of thirds. And I put together a quick little, let me turn some of this off real quick. So let's uh, have a little quick little demo of what the rule of thirds are, okay? So with the, the rule of thirds, we have our, our, oops, I went a little too far. We have our bounding box. This is our picture frame. Say so this is the aspect ratio of our, our um, storyboard here. And what we're doing for the rule of thirds is we have two vertical lines coming down. And with those two vertical lines that are coming down, it splits the screen into threes. So one, two, and three. And then you also have two horizontal lines that are going across and it divides the, uh, the picture frame into uh, thirds. So it brings it into nine bounding boxes. And uh, the theory of the rule of thirds is when you're in, this, is, this goes for storyboarding, this goes for uh, photographers, this goes for filmmakers, uh, this goes for a, a lot of different imagery, but to make a comp composition and, and what the, what, what this does is your eye is automatically going to be drawn to the center stage here of these four areas. And so what you're trying to, to, to do is 
you are trying to get the viewer to focus on these areas, okay? And it could be one of the, the areas or all four of the areas. It really doesn't matter. Um, but that's where, where you have a composed shot and uh, this is what you're trying to see. So if I'm simply just working in silhouette and I have a character here, I want to make sure that character is on that point right here. So if they're right here, I want to make sure that character is right there on that point. And so you're focused on that character on that point. And it could work all different types of ways. Say we have a character like this, okay? Or we say, maybe it's a close-up shot, okay? And we want them to be focused here. Maybe the head is here and uh, we have that character focused right here. And that's what we're looking at. There's that character, there's his eye. I've been having fun exploring. Uh, I know the late Darwin Cook, uh, I, I just love his drawings and his simplification of things. I study his work a lot. But there, there's a character here and you're focused on those intersecting points. And that's what we're trying to explain. You know, the, 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 we're, we're trying to, to have the subject placed on those center points uh, to tell the story. Where are you focusing? Where is the composition? Um, we also can talk about the composition too, if it's a, a sky or if it's, if it's the ground on a landscape shot, you know, and it might just be down here. Here's the, the level and this is where we're focused on. Okay, just giving all that maximum room to the, to this area here, on the uh, you know um, in in the sky. So this is our sky shot, and you're using those those rules of thirds to keep it there. Or maybe we do the opposite, and we want to focus on the ground. So maybe it's a nighttime shot, and we would. Here's our mountain range up here. And we're focused on the ground of that epic battle scene or whatever it might be. So we're using that rule of thirds to, to create that composition in terms of what we're doing. Maybe it's, uh, it's here and we're just the battles going on. You have all the soldiers uh, just everywhere and I'm just making marks here. Not making anything fancy. And here's the battle, you know, explosions, whatever else. But that's where you're using that, that rule of thirds of what you're trying to do. It's, it's a great tool. Um, most, uh, pretty much all camera, you know, electronic cameras, DSLR cameras, all have this rule of thirds grid on your camera. And when you're shooting, whether it be your cell phone or whatever it is, and you're doing photography, um, go ahead and uh, yeah, turn that on. You can turn on that feature on your phone. And uh, I was thinking about this when I was putting sort of our, our chat together is when, you, when you're trying to, to relate what you're doing in the drawing and you need an example for yourself, pull out your cell phone. Take your cell phone out. Take some pictures with your cell phone uh, on a horizontal uh, access point with your phone and have some fun with it. Take those pictures, take it back to your studio or your sketchbook. Uh, are you sketching? You should be sketching every day. If you wanna be a, a, a good artist, you know, you have to hone those skills in. But this is another tool that you could use to um, capture real life. You know, uh, we're always talking about, you can, you can study and uh, I was just, bringing up about Darwin Cook, you know, I'll, I'll look at his work and then draw it in my style and sort of learn what am I learning, how does he break it down, or how was he breaking it down when he was creating uh, his different comics for Catwoman or whatever project he was working on at the time. But go out there in real life, take pictures like this, 
use that rule of thirds so when you bring you have that photo library of imagery that you're taking and you could use that for your storyboard so that's just a little tip there uh, that would be fun to do if there's any questions please do leave them in the chat I'm looking over every now and then as we're talking uh, to, to get going on that uh, another um, strategy here let me turn off some of these layers here in terms of what we're talking about So an another uh, aspect of composition uh, is going to be about the golden triangle, too. And the golden triangle is another little systematic way that you can draw as well. And all it is is it's a, it's a vertical line you know, coming from this corner. Whoops, let's get some red on there. This corner to this corner. And all it is... Just a line, boom, okay? It's just a diagonal line from one corner, the top left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner. And, and then we're, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to have our, we're gonna look at these intersecting lines at sort of a third here and here. So um, that's sort of just a brief example uh, of the golden triangle. Let's write that down. Okay, and what we're doing, just like the rule of thirds, we're looking at those two center points right here and right here. And with that, we could create a really nice composition. Uh, maybe there's a, a character here. Let's get some black in there again. Maybe there's a character here. And that, and like I said, keep your, your drawing simple quick maybe there's a character here a female here and maybe there's a character looking up right here. This is really rudimentary, but you're in com you're you're creating a great composition in terms of what you're doing, and then you can use your tools if it. And that's what's great about working digitally is if I need to move this character. Oops. around you're trying to say something so it's this character here and this character here this so this is the gold oops we're moving everybody but we're but we have them on those two points so you see that point here and you see the point down here and um, and that's what we're trying to do to make a balanced composition in terms of what we're trying to to explain right now let's get this character here and maybe we'll shrink her down just a tad bit and you can see how quickly we're creating this so that person is maybe it's on her head just right there and we're great we're creating a great picture frame a great shot of whatever it might be so that's where we're taking the advantage of uh, points rule of thirds and now the golden triangle uh, we were trying to direct the audience where is that audience going to look we want that audience to see that 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 the subject in the foreground, the, the man there that's down, uh, he's in a weaker position even though he's larger, and then you have the female in the back, uh, you know, with a sort of the dominance, she's looking over him. So that makes it pretty fun for what we're trying to do. Okay, so that's our golden triangle. Uh, let's keep moving on. Uh, I think the, let's close up our demo here. Boom. And let's continue on. Let's turn our panels back on. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about real quick 
um, in terms of composition or lines. Uh, lines are really fun. And they can direct a lot of different things uh, for what you're doing. Um, you know, um, a, 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 pretty much a line is just a line, right? Just lines. And you can do a lot with lines in terms of what we're talking about. Um, when you're thinking of lines, let's get a new layer. If you have a line that's going vertical, that's going to be a line. We were talking about our hero shot. And I'll just draw a quick little silhouette. of whoever it might be. And it's just those lines are powerful. Uh, vertical lines are, are, are powerful. They show strength. Uh, they show height. So if I'm trying to show a, a building, I'm going to have those vertical lines showing those buildings and how big those buildings are, how small the buildings are. I've got a little water tower here. It, those are all vertical lines. Um, the other side, the other side's a vertical line. And then you also have your horizontal lines. When you see a horizontal line, it's very smooth, neutral, it's balanced. Uh, those lines are, are very calming. You know, you think about, you know, uh, you have over here, and you have the, the ocean, and you have your clouds, and, uh, you know, you have your waves of the ocean, and, or maybe you have that, you know, coconut tree, desert island, that Corona commercial type of thing, but uh, or you're thinking of Jack Sparrow and Johnny Depp on the seas of the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, it, it's very soothing. It, it's rocking. You know, uh, it also can show like distance. So if I'm got a point over here, it's showing that distance and how far away that person is. You usually you see uh, whether it be the uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and and Indy's riding off on his horse. Harrison Ford's riding off his horse into the sunset. You know, uh, you can show a distance with these lines as well. Um, another way that lines can be used in your composition, and we talked about this yesterday, with, or the last time we were together, we talked about it with our Dutch angle. When lines are sideways and you're tilting that line, uh, it, it's it's disorienting. It's like um, there's a lot of storytelling methods in terms of uh, it, 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 it's it's creating uh, chaos. It's creating those things. And if somebody's walking to you, or or the uh, the bad guy in the film is walking to the character, you know. Uh, or if that character's in this world, you'll see that like Doctor Strange and, and uh, stuff with all these different worlds, uh, Inception, those type of things. But uh, you're, you're showing things aren't quite right, uh, whether it be the character in the environment isn't right or internally something's not right, whether it be a, a, a close-up and let's say you don't have this, but it's, it's, the, it's the character and, he, and that person isn't right, you know, you would put them on that kilter line of what you're trying to do. They're not right. Something's wrong, you know, and so these vertical, or excuse me, these uh, diagonal lines would create that. So um, there's a couple of examples over there. The other thing with lines is we talk about this, and I usually see this in a lot of Bond films or just films in general. Uh, it, it's called leading lines. So if I have like a hallway scene or something like this, and you know my main character is right here, And you'll, you'll usually see this, and you'll see these lines coming out here. It'll be a hallway scene or whatever it might be. 
Oops, drawing my lines the wrong way, Paul. Your lines will be coming in through the hallway. And we're directing the viewer's eye to this character. You'll see this in like Mission Impossible movies, James Bond, thrillers, stuff like that. But those are all the leading lines because we want you to focus right here on 007 or whoever it might be, this character. We want you to focus on that character. And that's where the leading lines. Ubana, how you doing? Thanks for joining the stream. Really appreciate it. I hope you're getting something out of the uh, our little live stream that we have going on right now. Thank you for joining. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, throw them out there. If there's any questions, please do throw them out in the chat. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate all of your support. So talking about these leading lines, that's one way of leading lines. Another way of lines too is let's just say we have a character over here. Let's just say our character's here. Character's sitting down somewhere. Deep thinking, whatever it might be. Characters right here. And we want those lines coming down. And photographers use a lot of, uh, when, you, when, you're, when you're out there and you're shooting, and this is something you could do too with your camera, is have a friend or whoever your subject is, your dog, it doesn't even matter what it is, what the subject is. And, and, and if you see like railing, or you see a hallway, or you see a staircase, or something like that where you can actually take a picture, you can see those leading lines directing to the subject. So what we're, what we're telling is we're, we're, we're in our frame, we're showing where that, where your eye should focus. It's sort of a little bit like we were talking about with the, the point, that's all, but we're giving more so there's a better detailed picture right there. And we're using all this right here to give that communication to this particular character right there. So um, keeping it simple, keeping it flowing. Uh, there's all different ways uh, that we can do this. Uh, another way is if we have that. that character here. And we want to lead those lines. Maybe we're, we're doing it differently. Maybe all the lines focus right on that character. Whoops. Got a little crazy there. Let's bring that back. Oops. Now we're going crazy. Back to our red line, but we want all those lines focused on that particular character, and that's what we're trying to. And that's where lines uh, really, really help. It gives you orientation. It can create mood. Um, you know, there's a lot going on there. Okay. So moving on from lines. Let's talk about shapes. That's another way for a comp, uh, excuse my language, excuse me. Uh, shapes is another way we can communicate composition. And, and what that is, is, is with shapes, let's say, um, we have a character here in the foreground. So let's just draw that character here. We're looking at that character's back. Let's fill it in with some black so we get the idea. We're keeping it really loose and simple, nothing fancy. We're just trying to explain what we're doing here. Maybe that character's saying, we'll see you later, bye. 
and all, all we're saying with this is let's say uh, there's a character right here on the street the car is driving away down the road whatever it might be and so what we're doing is 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 we're frame in a sense framing within a frame a little bit here and all I'm saying is that within this shape here is where our focus is maybe we have a little bit of we have a little bit of gray in here just to, from the background or building there or whatever it might be so our eye is helping the viewer focus on that shape and that's where we want our eye to focus on is right there so that's where you're, you're, you're using shapes in terms of what we're talking about you know another another shape that we can talk about is let's say uh, you know we sit there and, and, and we watch uh, you know Anne Bancroft or whatever has her her knee up in her leg there's that sexy pose where she's right here has her skirt whatever it is this is in the graduate Dustin Hoffman is in the background and we're looking at that and you can have different frames and so let's just say Dustin Hoffman the character that he's playing is right here and he has that that shock the shock and awe He's right there, and this is that, that, that bedroom scene or whatever. It's that shock and awe. So what we're doing is when you're talking about different shapes, is you're talking about a triangle here. This is the triangle. This is where we want the viewer to focus on, and this is what the director is doing. Okay, so they use the leg of Anne Bancroft uh, to focus on the character of Dustin Hoffman there. Uh, you also see this a lot with these focuses like this and using shapes. You're going to see these in westerns, and you're going to do it like here. So let's just say this is uh, we have the hero with no name, Clint Eastwood, and he's sitting there in the door frame right here at the desert scene. And just get some quick blocking. You sort of get the idea here. And so the idea with this particular shot is we're focused on a rectangle. So that's the, the focus as we're talking about the balance of the picture. Um, Bonnet, no problem. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying uh, the video and the live stream. Don't forget, if you can't stay, I appreciate you joining. So, uh, uh, Ubana, thank you so much for joining. Um, what I would say is catch it on the replay. I, put, I have these up. So after the live stream is done, please go ahead and just come back and you can finish watching uh, as, as we're uh, finishing up and everything. So for everything uh, that you miss. But thank you so much. If there are any questions, folks, just put them into the comments. I'll take a look here and there uh, to continue as we're going through. So we talked about all the different shapes. And you can use whatever shape you want. And this is what you're doing in your composition. Like I said, you're using a circle, you're using a triangle, you're using a square, you're using a rectangle, 
a vertical rectangle. It does not matter um, in terms of uh, what you're trying to do. And this leads us into our next section here. Is with all this stuff we're talking about, is it leads you into something of let's just think about those shapes and 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 those type of that type of thinking right there, but an analogy is a frame. within a frame. You see this done in films all the time. Um, I'll have to figure out, um, Rashid, thank you so much um, uh, for your comment. I'll have to, to, to figure out how to do that with the subtitles. Um, uh, a little bit new to this, so uh, I will definitely try to figure out how to get some subtitles as uh, I, I am working here, and uh, we can get my text into subtitles for you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll look into that to see what we can do. Please do captions on. Okay, I don't know how to do that right now, but I will try to figure that out for the next live stream, maybe something we can do in the future. Okay, so a frame within a frame. Let's talk more about that. And what we're talking about, let's just let's use those shapes that we were talking about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rashid. I really appreciate you joining. Uh, it, it's funny. I, uh, I, had a, I was working at a video company a, a long time ago, and... Uh, uh, we had a we had a team in Hyderabad, and uh, and that was a real great experience for me. Uh, you know, having having uh, external artists working from uh, overseas, it was, it was absolutely phenomenal. So thank you so much. Much love back to India. So thank you, and thanks for watching. Okay, so let's go within a shot within a shot. I sort of have here, and let's just say we have a character in, in this sort of frame here and let's just say they're just standing here in this aspect right here maybe they have battle scene or something like that it's Arnold or whatever uh, but what we're trying to do here is this is a frame within a frame and, and all we're doing is we're having the, the subject just focus in that shot. So as you compose your shot, your eye is focused. Oops. In this one area. So that's where we want the eye to go, is right here. And with that shape, that's what we're doing right there. And this can be done in all different types of uh, types of ways, um, but this is a, a frame within the frame. Uh, you see this in Citizen Kane, um, in terms of a, a frame within a frame. We see this in uh, uh, Hitchcock with Vertigo, uh, Rear, Rear, Rear Window. Uh, I, I'm big on films and film study, I think, to be a great storyboard artist and learn this craft, you need to watch a lot of films. And what I do, I watch films a few times. I have my all-time favorites, and maybe we'll have one of our live streams about my favorite uh, films or favorite directors or uh, favorite uh, aspects of, of filmmaking and storyboarding and what, 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 why, why I get jazzed about the topic and have passion for it. But I'm a student. I'm always a student. It doesn't matter how long I've been doing this. I'm always a student of... Uh, this medium of uh, filmmaking and its different aspects. Um, I've done all sorts of uh, things in the past, whether I've been the, the, uh, the photographer, or I've been the filmmaker myself, or I'm editing, or whatever it might be. I've been doing this for a really long time, and I, I enjoy learning as much as I can. But uh, we're trying to tell stories here with a, with a frame within a frame, and there's so many interesting examples of this. Uh, you know, you'll see this uh, frame within a frame. Wes Anderson uh, will use use this uh, frame within a frame system, and it, and it makes it really for some great uh, 
uh, comp you know, compositions in terms of what you're trying to do. Another example of a frame within a frame would be something, whoops, is let's say we have a staircase coming in here. There's a staircase coming down, the characters coming down that staircase in terms of what they're doing and walking down. And that there's a hallway or something like here, here. And this is where that frame within a frame focus is. If you get my meaning of what we're trying to talk about here. So that that's what we're talking about with a frame within a frame. Um, sometimes you can use a frame within a frame to make things, to tell the storytelling that things are not right. Um, and what I mean by that is, let's just say we have a character here. And what, like we talked about in our previous live stream, if we have a, a character Let's just say I have a character that's having a hard day. We're looking sort of top down. at that character and the world is coming really tight around him we're using that Dutch angle shot you can make that look you can start in this type of shot and then move in closer and closer and it makes that character being very claustrophobic in that environment or, or wherever it might be. Maybe there's a staircase here or something, I don't know. It's just like, but that uh, character is very claustrophobic and then you can gr grab your shot. Oops, let's not do it like that get in there and get closer and closer and closer to that character uh, you know maybe the character was shot or something like that and so golly do you guys come on you you know, uh, wherever it might be, as you get closer and closer to that shot. So that's a, a frame within a frame uh, in terms of what we're trying to talk about. If, there's any, if you have any questions, folks, just go ahead and put them into the chat um, in terms of what we're trying to talk about. Okay, so another aspect of composition here. Go back up again. Rashid uh, was asking, where am I from? I'm here in central Pennsylvania in the United States. Um, I've been out here on the East Coast for a little while. I have family in California, so I'm usually bouncing between West Coast and East Coast. But that's where I'm from. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about, too, is let's talk about 
another uh, compositional action that we have here is about patterns and tech patterns and texture in terms of what we're doing uh, you know shapes have a lot of things to do with it I didn't mention this when I was talking about lines but like circular lines or calming diagonal lines uh, create tension or disorientation. Uh, we were talked about uh, horizontal lines being calming, vertical lines showing power in terms of your drawings uh, for what you're doing. But patterns and textures, um, let's just get something in here. We're thinking of the simplest forms here. And you can get super complicated with all your drawings, but patterns are right here. The patterns are there, but if I have a character in a, in a, in a, in a patterny area, so let's play around with this idea of patterns and textures. So you have a, a character here, and let's just say she's wearing an evening gown of some sort. or she's singing or whatever it might be. Give her a little bit of hair. That character against a patterned background. Let's change the sign, transform this a little bit, scale. We can get that character to stand out, you know, in that in that background or whatever it might be, in terms of what we're trying to do. And even if you go even bigger, and go back to that shot again, you can create some dynamic compositions there, because that character would stand out. Now, if you want that character to blend, so you can either pop the character out in your composition, or you could do the opposite and say the dress was all this polka dot color too. She would blend right in, and uh, it would create disorientation. It would be create something different than just looking at the character like that, popping off the screen. So when you have a, a lot of textures, and uh, so that's more of a pattern, but let's turn that off real quick. But let's talk about uh, like something like a texture or something like that. Um, same thing goes. Um, so let's just say we have something technical. Maybe we have some sort of ship. All the lines are smooth on the ship. Or the jet, the fighter, whatever, whatever it might be. It's very smooth, very commanding in terms of what it is. Let's just say so this is some sort of rocket ship or something like that. But my, my point is it's very smooth, very futuristic in terms of what you're doing. Okay, get a little bit of horizon line so we can get some perspective of what we're doing. And then maybe there's, so this is sort of more futuristic looking, or you have another another ship that is following or whatever it might be. I don't know if this is the best example, but maybe it's a hunk of junk 
and this ship. This has texture on it. Maybe it's some sort of organic. a rust bucket of some sort or whatever it might be. It has a lot of texture to it. It looks old. It's old school. It doesn't look as smooth. And that's where, you know, you're, you're putting together composition and the focus between that. Uh, you usually see it in films like, uh, I know they did it with uh, Wally. Wally was this little box character and he had a, I don't think I've ever drawn Wally before, but he was this box character. I forgot what he had. He had sort of like a, something like that. I forgot how he looked with his wheel or whatever he was. Uh, but he had, it was really Oh, he had like a conveyor belt. Yeah, that's it. Um, he looked really old, and then you had the super stylized robot of Eve. So you're, you're looking at different patterns and textures in terms of what you're what you're talking about in your composition uh, to to pop things out. And as we're, as we're continuing talking, and I appreciate everybody joining in. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. Please don't forget to, to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you're watching. It's, it's sort of hard because I'm sitting here talking in my office, and I, I can't really talk to anybody at the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it, there's not a lot of feedback. So I'm looking at the test. Rashid said, great, yes. Um, watch that movie. That is a very good movie. Okay, let's continue on, and we've talked about all these different things. Let's talk about space. Uh, space is great for compositions as well, you know, and there's two things we talk about. It's like space, and then we can get into to depth of what we're trying to, to talk about. But let's just talk about space first, okay? And, and what we're talking about with space is we're talking about the, the character and relationship uh, to... Let's just draw a little diagram here. Oops. And when I'm talking about space, get one thing here. Let's just say I have a character here. Okay. There's one character here. And when I'm talking about space, I'm looking at this character occupying this space. And this is positive space. Or if you're looking at the opposite way, and we're looking at that character, and this is where like a comic book artist like uh, Mike Mignola, they're really good great with these shadows and stuff. But when you see something like this, this would be a negative space. So you have your positive and then you have your negative space. You usually see this like in the, the intro for uh, 007. As, uh, Depending on if he's wearing the hat or if he's, if he's Sean Connery <laughs> or Daniel Craig. Uh, but you see him there and he has the gun. Oops, come on, computer. Catch it, buddy. And you see the circle and you see the cylinder and everything in the, in the frame. 
and uh, we're, we're talking about that positive and negative space in terms of what you're doing. And you hear that dun 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 That's using that positive and negative space uh, to create that composition of what we're talking about. Uh, and you can do that all the time. You know, uh, you can do that in uh, a horror movie, uh, a dramatic movie. Uh, it's that positive and negative, you know, shooting outside or inside, uh, sh lots of shadows, and that's what you're doing with space. Um, you can create some really great sensory overload with this too. So let's just talk about space. Let's do another quick little thumbnail shot. And let's just say, if I'm talking about space, I have the character right here. And you have all this negative space. Makes him look small, makes the character look dwarf. There's all this space over here. And, uh, you know, we can talk about that, that ratio now, where it's like the, the character is really, really small just right here, but there's all this space. Or if it's the opposite, where the character takes all the, all the room massive space. In terms of what we're talking about. So two different spatial relationships in terms of filling the frame. Um, as we're talking about uh, the framing of a shot too. Oops. Give a couple more examples. Uh, if, like you usually see an interview type of shot or a conversation shot. And we're, we're looking at that shot and we're looking at that, the headroom. This is, that's this distance. Get a different color. But that's the, the headroom of that particular character that's right there. of what we're talking about. Um, or it might be lead room. So that's the headroom here, but you might have lead room, and that lead room is looking in the character's direction, and that lead room is this area right here. So, and you can say different things. Um, uh, say, say I'm doing a, a, a panel, excuse me, a frame, and I want the, the, the character to be really dwarfed. You'll see this in certain films. Just, they're insignificant. They're here, you know, and that there's gonna be a lot of space around them. So if you think about it, it just makes them look weak. And you can do the opposite to make, uh, uh, to make them look strong or they're the focus of, of what the, the frame is. So, um, just taking a quick little check over here at our chat. Appreciate everybody on the chat. Uh, Ronnie, would the ratatouille fruit scene be a good example of pattern and texture? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, there's just different, and that's when, I, I guess he had that, the cheese and, and, and fruit, or the cheese and mushroom, and he went into that euphoric uh, state um, in, in uh, ratatouille. Um, uh, that's definitely uh, patterns. You usually see in a lot of Disney films uh, or, or just uh, avant-garde films where there's a lot of clockwork orange or whatever. There's a lot of patterns and textures. Uh, I would say the biggest movie, I think, in terms of film history like that would be The Shining. Um, you have that worm's eye view or ground level view of, of the little boy on the on the on the on the tricycle, and you have all those fantastic carpet patterns, patterns of the hotel walls. It it it, it, it it's all maze like. And when you go into the main maze scenes later in the film, uh, where uh, Jack Nicholson's uh, trying to get Shelley Duvall and and and, 
and, and the child uh, and using all those maze patterns, those are all different uh, films that you could look at to get those type of ideas of what you're doing. Uh, that, that carpet and the, the long extended shot of, of the child riding around on the uh, tricycle gives you this uh, I think it was room I think it was room two three seven something like that and the kid finally gets there and it's so eerie and you have music going and it's so eerie and creepy with the patterning of the carpet um, so those are some examples there as we're looking at classic films so let's continue on on a few more here so we can finish up for the night on our our composition here is another one that we think about too is is about depth or depth and oops come on computer depth and what we're talking about you know uh, when you're when you're talking about depth you have let's just say we have a character right here You have a character character right here and maybe have a group of characters out here so so if you're thinking about it in terms of composition this would be your foreground, middle ground, background. And you're, you're thinking about these, these three different units. You're thinking of the stage and staging of your characters in your composition and in your shot. You know, what's foreground, what's middle ground, what's background. And then you could sit there and um, let's just say, uh, and this is what's great, you can do sort of a, a rack focus on this type of composition. Let's copy and paste that up there. Okay, so you here and let's just go, let's put a, uh, Put some sort of blur on there. And so we can get the blur here and it keeps our focus over here. And if, uh, you know, if we're focused on the background, maybe these two, these two subjects are blurred out and we're focused on the background. Or we blur, and this is where the aperture on the camera is changing to give you that, uh, in photography terms, if you're watching like Peter McKinnon and everything, and you're talking about bokeh, it, it's it's a, you're, you're you're changing the focal length of the camera there, and uh, it, you know, excuse me, you're changing the aperture and you're bringing in more light, you know, and it sort of blends this background. So if I wasn't focused on him, and uh, I was, and I wanted to focus on the foreground, I could grab. Make sure I'm grabbing the right stuff here. Bring this down a little bit. Let's do that. Do the motion blur there. And we can create that blur even more. And this is what happens when you're having a get a real blur in there. So I'm really focused on this character. This character is in detail and sharpness up in the front. 
and uh, that's what we're talking about with depth. Um, yeah, you can show the hierarchy of power in these type of shots that you're drawing and having sort of fun with that. I think the, the final thing we're going to talk about tonight in terms of composition, and these are things you can spend some more time and study and have fun with, but these are all the different types of compositions for your shots and how you could create it. But the last one we're going to be talking about this evening is we're going to talk about balance. Okay, balance. We want everything uh, to be in, 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 in balance. Um, you know, you, you want balance in, in what you're trying, in trying to do. So if I'm giving you an example of what balance is not, and, and what's interesting is you can, whoops, just got a little crazy there. When you have, let's just say you have a character that's all the way over here. And there's nothing in that negative space. You're creating imbalance, okay? Um, in, in in terms of your shot, uh, you, you're you're imbalanced in terms of what you're doing in that shot, and you want to have balance. Um, in, in in filmmaking, in terms of what you're trying to do, you want everything to be in balance. So, let's just say if you have a balance of characters. Let's just say I have three hitmen standing together, all wearing their suits, I'm thinking Reservoir Dogs or something, Tarantino type of thing. When, when you see something like this, everything is in balance to a certain extent. So you have one character here, you have one character here, one character here. So uh, let me bring a crazy another color in here. But through these three characters, there's, there's balance in the shot. And they call it the, the rule of odds. Is that when you're, when you're creating your image, um, you always want to have uh, at least three. Everything needs to be in odd. So it's going to be a three, five, seven, you know, it's, and it, it, it makes a more uh, pleasing balance uh, to the scenario. And you can balance, you can balance in a two, two, two person shot too, but it makes it interesting when there's balance. And you'll see like uh, uh, maybe, maybe the same movie, Tarantino and Reservoir Dogs, and you're going around the, the table scene of, of, the, the, the planning of the crime and you're going, you're usually not seeing just one person, you'll see in groups of threes, groups of fives, and they're going back and, and it's, it's, there's, everything is in balance uh, to make a composition uh, work. So remember that, that rule of odds, the rule of odds in three, five, seven, whatever it might be um, in terms of what you're doing. The, another thing we're talking about too is with, uh, is with balance. I have one more little quick little demo I created here for you. And it's the, it's the golden ratio. And the golden ratio uh, is when you're, you're splitting rectangles to, to, to create a topic, uh, you know, a, a, a balanced uh, composition of what you're trying to do. Uh, I think uh, the uh, ratio is one by one, one point, what is it, six one eight is, is the ratio. And what, what this is, is I'm taking this rectangle in proportion, taking this rectangle, this, you know, this rectangle, and it keeps going down in, in, in infinitely. And the, and, and the gold, I didn't write that down yet. The 
golden ratio in terms of what we're talking about. And um, you, can, you can do this in all different ways in terms of shots. This is a, this shot, and you think about, um, it's found in nature, and this is what creates composition and balance, is that you think about this, you know, what has this shape is, you know, shells and snails. They have that, you know, perfect balance using that golden ratio. I'm not talking about Gary from SpongeBob now, <laughs> but it, we, we see that all the time in, uh, in nature. So when we see that, it's, it's very pleasing. It's very, very, very uh, balanced uh, in composition. So how can we tr use this type of scenario there's a lot of famous photographers that do use the golden ratio in terms of what we're doing and we're just sort of thinking about it. So if I have a character right here and they're looking down in the scene in terms of the importance of what's in the scene and maybe we just have, we're using that golden ratio in terms of our composition. Of the shot, you know, and you can put that framing together. A little bit thicker line there as I'm working here. Maybe it's a, using our James Bond scenario, there's all the specter bad villains just looking over everything. In terms of what we're doing. But this is using that, that balance as we're going through and maybe Low fellow or somebody's given his speech here. And you can sort of get the idea of the of the golden ratio of what we're talking about here. But that creates balance too. So we went through a lot tonight. It's uh, almost an hour and a half in. Uh, let's just, just sort of do a quick little recap of what we were talking about today and sort of go through everything. And sort of from my notes here. So we focus on storyboarding composition. How do we draw this? How do we create this? And then we sort of take these basic mastery of the basics. I think I'm calling all these live streams the, the mastery of the basics, uh, basic fundamentals of what we're doing. The more you understand that we're, we're building a foundation of our knowledge, our art history, our film history, our drawing skills, and you can get up to your complicated storyboard panels or a sequence or whatever you're working on, but you need to know the basics of what you're doing before you can go forward. And it's our time to share. So we, we talked about elements uh, that are arranged to make up a composition or the shot for your storyboard. We talked about points. Uh, we talked about the uh, rule of thirds. We talked about the, uh, the golden triangle um, in terms and just go back in the video if you need to repeat those things or get a better understanding. We talked about, you know, like we said, the lines, uh, leading lines, diagonal lines, curve lines, uh, horizontal lines are pleasing, uh, vertical lines show power. We talked about shapes, circles, squares, triangles, rectangles. Uh, we talked about the shapes. One thing we didn't talk about was irregular shapes natural shapes, um, they give you a different sense. Let's just say uh, you're looking through a fence uh, for your, your, your framing there or something like that. Uh, those lines are a little bit different. Uh, natural lines give you a different sense of things. We talked about the frame within a frame. You know, we're talking about a Western John Wayne coming through a, 
a door and all the focus is in the frame or if you're looking through a store window at the, the characters having dinner or whatever it might be. Um, we also talked about, um, um, you know, our, whoops, I lost a little bit there. We talked about textures and patterns. We talked about space. We talked about depth. Uh, we talked about the golden, you know, the golden ratio. Um, and there's all those different things to help your composition in terms of what you're doing. I look forward to our next chat. Um, we'll, I'll figure out when we're going to do it. I was thinking about possibly this weekend. Uh, we'll do another one. I'm having a fun time, uh, you know, sharing my processes and, and what's in my mind and what's thinking, uh, all the thinking behind uh, being a storyboard artist. There's a lot to it. Uh, this is, an e this is a, a fun job, but it's a lot of work, and you have to work really quickly. But with these fundamentals, you can be super successful uh, for what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. Let's see. Any more buddy, buddy from the chat? Ronnie, thank you for, st for the streaming and all the help. Uh, you've been good night. Definitely enjoying these. Uh, Ronnie, thank you so much. Rashid, if you're still there, awesome. Thanks so much uh, for joining me tonight. If you're catching us on the replay, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to listen to me and my passion about storyboarding. And I hope you got some great value. If you got some great value out of this, um, this live stream, whether you're watching it live right now or you're watching on the replay, please uh, hit a like, sh throw me a comment, Please subscribe. It lets me know that you're watching, that you'd like to see more. Uh, I have uh, a lot of plans where I'd like to take uh, this budding YouTube channel uh, to give you some great content and uh, help you if this is a passion of yours and, and building our community together. There's a lot of great pros out there that I've been working with that uh, have just been absolutely inspiring to me and uh, very helpful. So I want to be able to be helpful to you all too that are new in this business or hook up as, uh, as peers as we're uh, going through these uh, uh, interesting times uh, in storyboard and filmmaking and uh, this content creation. But I hope you got a lot out of it. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next live stream. I'll uh, put it up here on the YouTube channel and on Instagram. But thank you. Have a great night. Keep drawing. Keep the, the sketchbooks going. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a great night.